<clears throat> I thank God for the uh, privilege to be with you guys this morning um, and as our pastor's way uh, with uh, Gowdy, Brother Gowdy, we're just praying that we hear a great report from that trip. I'm going to get back. I'm looking Amen. forward to hearing what they're going to say. It's going to be wonderful. I'm very excited. Um, uh, if you can turn with me today in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew 25. We're going to be starting in verse 14. Matthew 25. We're going to be starting in verse 14. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Were you there to say amen? amen? All right. I'm going to um, be looking for a reader. I might get Elijah to be my reader this morning. <laughs> you, you, you're my, dude, you're my voice. You don't have to come up here. What if I just bring the mic to you? Would you do it for me? Come on, Elijah. Guys, this dude, he has such an awesome voice. He does. Like, he could be on one of those auto machines that, you know, you listen to. Uh, I'm, I'm, I think I'm a, the Lord, I think, it, I think it's you, Elijah. You got your Bible? Let me get you a Bible. You're going to grab him a Bible. You want a Bible or you just want to read from the screen? You read from the screen? Okay, thank you so much. Everybody clap for Elijah. This is, uh, this is my dude right here. He reads for me and you group and he does an awesome job. They all do. I make them all read. Uh, I make them uh, open up the Bible because I want them to follow along with me. So I think it's good that we have the Word of God and we can follow along, okay? Because if not, we're thinking about what we're going to eat for lunch. So, amen? All right, Elijah, go ahead and um, <clears throat> read. It's going to be a lot, but I, I believe you. Go ahead and read for me, Elijah, verses one to uh, 14 to 20. For, for the kingdom of heaven it, it is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he, he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he had received the five talents, went and traded with the same, and made them other five talents. And likewise, he, he that had received two, he also gained another two. But he that had received one went and did in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so that he had received five talents and came and brought the other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto them, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful for a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. He also that hath received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto the two talents. Behold, I have gained another two other talents beside them. His Lord saith unto them, Well the well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. And he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not straw. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast, that is thine. Which his Lord answered and said unto them, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sow not, and gather where I have not straw. Thou ought therefore have to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received my own with usury. usury. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto them which have ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not, not shall be taken away, even that with he hath. And cast ye the 
unprofitable servant unto outer darkness there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth very good thank you thank you Elijah that was a lot but I wanted to read it I wanted us to read through the whole thing I don't know if you've ever heard this story before um, but it's the parable of the talents and uh, I was talking to my friend um, Stacy and we were talking and we were talking about the kingdom of God and she actually had a dream um, one night. If she doesn't mind me sharing it, I don't think she does. She had a dream one night. <clears throat> she asked the Lord for dreams. She was asking the Lord for a gift, and she was asking God for dreams. And you, how many know you can ask God for things, and he'll give it to you? If you ask him, he will give it to you. If you knock on the door, he, he's going to answer you. He's going to be faithful. But she asked the Lord. She was just said a prayer, Lord, give me dreams. I want to have dreams. Uh, give me dreams. And uh, so the Lord answered her prayer, gave her a dream. But she woke up, am I saying that right? She woke up with the Spirit of the Lord all over her, speaking in tongues. She literally woke up out of her sleep speaking in tongues. And all she, the Holy Spirit was just saying to her, kept saying, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. And as she was telling me about that, and she was saying the Lord brought it back to her again, and she was um, speaking at the school um, to the younger kids. They had a revival week. She was talking about the kingdom of God, and I was like, the story that came to my mind was the story of the parable of the talents. And so I just want to share this with you. In the, if I had a title, it would be, What Servant Are You? What Servant Are You? In verse 14, it says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. The kingdom of heaven. And when I was thinking about the kingdom of heaven, and like she was saying, I looked it up. It's in Matthew. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. <clears throat> Matthew 3. And then it says in verse 2, Matthew 3 verse 2, it says, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. And for those... And says, for this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Elias, saying, the voice of the one in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And John the Baptist was saying this when Jesus was coming towards him, when he was uh, getting baptized, and he seen him walking towards him. He was saying, repent, for the kingdom of God is at, at hand. What is the kingdom of God? When we think about the kingdom, what exactly are we thinking about? I know for me, when I think about a kingdom, I think about riches. I think about uh, a, a massive uh, time. I actually think of uh, about the um, the time of uh, Europe when it was uh, King Caesar and all those great rulers and the kingdom, how they had massive kingdoms and they were reigning and they were ruling. So I ask you today, what is the kingdom of heaven to you? The kingdom of heaven. And so when I looked up, <clears throat> excuse me. When I looked at that word kingdom, sorry, I lost my spot. Matthew 25, 14. When I looked at that word kingdom, it was saying to, to, it was a royalty, it was a rule, it was a group of people. Let me get to it. The kingdom of God. Excuse me, Lord, help me. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Technology. A minute is for you. Next minute is trying to destroy you. Okay. Hallelujah. I can't find my definition. But I remember it was saying to rule and to reign. And when, when, when we decide to come into the kingdom of God, and the number one thing we do is we repent. That's what, that's what John the Baptist did. He said, he said, repent for the kingdom of God is at, at hand. And in order for us to be a part of the kingdom of God, we have to what? We have to what? We have to repent. In order to be a part of the kingdom of God, we have to repent. What are we repenting? 
We are denying, we are turning away from our own ruling, our own reign. And we're saying, God, I'm coming into your kingdom. You are the Lord of my life. I give you full control of my life. I am walking away from the world and them being my kingdom and having reign over me. And I choose to come into Christ and you are my lordship. So every single one of us, we are part of the kingdom of heaven. We are workers in the kingdom of heaven. And it's in this story said, it's like a man traveling from a far country. Who's the man? Anybody know? Come on, talk to me this morning. Who's the man? Jesus. Jesus is the man. He's the man that traveled from a far place, came down, and when he came down, he made his kingdom on earth, and he gave us a door. He actually made a way, but also it says this. It says, he called us his servants. So he traveled from afar. He came from heaven. He left his throne in heaven, came to earth to bring his kingdom from heaven to earth. That, that prayer, we say, Lord, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He brought his kingdom down, Jesus Christ, and he's made his kingdom on this earth. And he also, what he called us, he called every single one of us. Um, you know, when we look at ourselves and we look at our lives, a lot of times we might look at someone's gift and we might look at what they can do and we say, man, I wish I had that. I wish I could do that. Well, only if the Lord gave me that, man, I'll be on fire for the Lord. Man, if I could just pray in tongues like Sister So-and-so, man, I, I'd be on fire for the Lord. If I had confidence like Pastor Matt, man, you wouldn't be able to tell me nothing. I'll be preaching the gospel. And the Lord's looking at you and he's saying, I called you. I called you to do that. I called you to do it. I called you. Every single one of us, he called us. He said he called. In verse 1, it says, it says, a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants. You are a servant of God. If you believe in Jesus Christ this morning, you are a servant of God. If you do not believe in Jesus Christ this morning, he's knocking on the door of your heart and he's saying, come, come. I want you to be a part of my kingdom. I have wonderful things for you. Come to me. So he called us his own servants. And it says he called us to be separate from the world, a, a separate, set apart unto himself. That word call is to bid us. He, he bids you. He bids you. He says, come to me. Come to me. And then he said, I want you to be my servant. What is a servant? A servant literally is a slave. Well, that doesn't sound wonderful. That doesn't sound great. I, that doesn't sound very pleasing to me. If I go up to Ron and I'm like, hey, man, I got a job for you, and it's going to be amazing. It's going to be the best deal you ever had. And he's like, okay, what is it? I'm like, I want you to be my slave. What would you say to me, Ron? He'd be like, hey. and he's like, no way. He'd be like, what, how is this wonderful? And I'm like, just come be my slave. And he's like, what? It's different than what the world says, right? The world says to live your life, make yourself your own God, make yourself your own ruler, live your life the way you want to, and you will be the queen and the king of your life. That's the way of the world. But when you sign that dotted line, they don't tell you. It's like the fine print when you buy a car and you don't understand exactly what you're signing. You just hear the good stuff and you sign it, but there's a lot more to it that you don't know. Because on the other side, the other flip side of that kingdom is death and destruction. But the Lord says, come and be my slave. He's literally saying, lose your life. Lose your life that you can find life in me. Lose yourself in me. Lose yourself in me. Lose everything that the world says that you're supposed to be. Everything that someone spoke on you. Everything that someone called you. Lose your identity and find your identity in me. And he wants you and he wants me to find my identity in Christ and yes. his kingdom of heaven. He calls us and he no, says, be my servant, be my slave. There's life after death. Everything that dies bears fruit. If a seed falls to the ground and it dies that's and right. it goes in the ground, it's able to produce fruit. That's right. And that's like us. He's saying, come and be my servant. And also it was a word that says to be a bondman. And when I looked up that word bond man, it said it was a friendship. It said a friendship, a relationship, a partnership. Wait, but I'm your slave. But the Lord said, no, but this is a partnership. You're, you're a slave because you're, you're saying the things of this world, like Adam, the old man is dead and you are alive in Christ today. And he says, come and be my bond man. Fellowship with me. A friendship, a, par a, a partnership. That's what he's calling us to. And it might not look wonderful in man's eyes, but it's a beautiful thing. 
Death in Christ is a beautiful thing. It's an oxymoron. It's crazy. How is death wonderful? Because I die and then Christ lives in me. And it's the best thing I can ever do. To allow myself to be no more and allow Christ to live forevermore in my life. Lord, live through me, Jesus. Lord, make me your servant. Let me, let my life, Lord, bring glory to you. Let my life bring glory to you. But see, the Lord's not a man that says, come and live this life, and then he just leaves us. Look at verse 1, what he says. He says, he calls his own servants, and what? He delivered unto them his goods. He delivered unto them his goods. He's the one that provides. He's the one that provides. He doesn't call you to this walk of life, a, a, a walk of separation from the world, and it says, figure it out. And if you make it, you make it. Oh, well, I'm just going to sit up here and watch you and just hope you make it. You don't do that to your children. You don't do that to the ones that you love. He doesn't tell you to come and give. He says, come, give me all your brokenness, and that's it. No, he says, give me all your brokenness, and I'm going to give you in return something wonderful. That's right. It's an awesome exchange with Jesus Christ. It is an exchange that takes place. The world doesn't do that. You give the world of yourself and they just want more and more and more and it leaves you empty, broken, and destitute. It leaves you broken and just so empty. But with Christ, we come with our, our nothingness, we come with our brokenness and we give it to him and he gives us something glorious. He gives us something so wonderful. He's the one that delivers unto them his goods. Yeah. It's his goods. It's his goods what he gives you. Everything that he's made, I know when we were going through the book of Genesis, we were talking about Genesis, and we were saying that it's good. And everything that the Lord has made is good. And I was telling the kids, I was telling the teenagers, I was like, I want you to get in the mirror when you go home and look at yourself and say, it's good. And look at yourself and just literally say, it's good. Because what the world, how the world portrays us, and how the world makes us think, it literally tells us that it's not good. And we can tear ourselves down, and we can bring harm to ourselves, or different things like that. But the Lord said, it's good. But he provides the goods. I thank God that he provides the good. What is the good? He, the goods are what? He made a way on the cross at Calvary. He paid the debt that I could not, I could not, oh, I could not pay. He, a debt that was beyond anything I could ever imagine. He came and fulfilled it. And he gave me, in exchange, a glorious gift. Thank you, Jesus, that you provide the gift, Lord. You call us to come. You say, be my servant, but you don't leave us there, God. You deliver the goods to us. Look at verse 15. It says, and unto one he gave them five talents, and then unto the other he gave two, and the other he gave one, and every man according to his serviceability. And straightway he took his journey. Every believer has a ministry that the Lord has given them. Every believer has a ministry that the Lord has given them. What God has maybe called me to do might not be the same thing with Mark, what the Lord calls Mark to do. Everybody has their own ministry, but yet it's still one. It's incredible. It's like you're building this awesome quilt, and there's so many lines, and there's so many different things, and everyone is important, but everyone is different. But yet you need everybody to make a whole. You need every part of the body to make a whole. I need my fingers. Now, I can live without my fingers, but it would be a lot more difficult. I need my feet to walk. I can live without my feet, but it's going to be a lot more difficult to walk around and to travel and to get where I need to get from A to B. So we need every part, but everyone's different. Look at your neighbor and say, I need you. Say, I need you. Come on, that's weak. Say, I need you. Come on, if we were dying and if we were in a horrible storm and we needed each other to hold each other down, you'd be like, I need you. Come on, wake up. I need you. Say, wake up. I need you. Come on, say, wake up. I need you. Shake and say, wake up. I need you. That should be our mindset. We should need each other because we are in a storm of life. Life comes and goes, but we need each other. We need each other. Our life depends on it. I need you as if my life depends on it.
depends on. It is a serious matter. It is very serious. If this, I'm telling you, if a tornado started coming in here and ripping off the thing and we all had to get together to hold ourselves down together, we would do it. And there's a tornado of this world coming in and trying to rip us apart and bring division in the church of God, trying to bring havoc, and we need to lock arms and say, I need you. Wake up. I need you. I need you to give me the, I need you to encourage me. I need you to, to help me. Everybody has his own ministry. Everyone. But so many times what happens in the body of Christ, we start looking at everybody's thing and we start, we start, well, why did they get five and I only got two? And, oh, I'm so much better because I got five and they only got one. That becomes our mindset. That, that's the thing that becomes, we become so hooked up on and we're blinded. Where we become blinded and we're looking at what you got and what I ain't got and what and everything else and the enemies over there laughing and God's like, wake up, you need each other. Yeah. Right. And we start griping and we start looking and when the bitterness comes in, the unforgiveness comes in. And the whole time the enemy's happy because he's saying if they only knew if they moved as a one unit, they would be yeah. powerful. If they moved as a team, man, they would, I mean, if they just went out in Patterson with confidence and just locked arms, man, we would take over this little town. We would, we would turn this town upside down. If we would not look at each other and just, well, why'd you get that? Why? Why did, why did she do that? Why, did, why is he doing that? And if we would just look down at what God has given us in our hands. And we tend to what God has given us in our hands, yes. Thank you, Lord. it would be amazing. That's right. It would be amazing. And unto one he gave five, and unto the other he gave two. And then to one he, he gave one. Everyone according to his serviceability. God's going to give you what you can handle. He says, be faithful in a little, and he'll give you much. I've learned that just even with my my own business. I don't even know what kind of business I got. <laughs> I've been trying to put this business together for a while now. But it's just been a little by little. I started when COVID stopped, when when uh, the jobs weren't even happening anymore. Uh, I, I lost my job. The job shut down. And I was like, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? I was sitting at home looking at TV, watching uh, the, the channel where they're flipping houses. I'm just sitting on the couch and I'm, I'm watching like show after show of the flipping houses. It was Chip and Joanne. I was just, man, I was all about it. And I was like, man, I was sitting on the couch and I was like, Lord, if only you can give me, if I could just do that, that would be amazing. Yeah. Simple prayer, didn't even mean it, just, just a thought to the Lord, right? And he said to me, he said, you have not because you asked not. And I was like, what does that even mean? I'm like, what do you mean? And he's like, you need to text uh, Mark and Kristen. There was a couple that I went to Bible college with, and uh, the Lord put them on my heart. And I was like, well, I don't even know what they're doing, okay? And I knew they kind of did some of this kind of work. So I shoot a text. Now, mind you, <clears throat> I had no understanding of flipping houses. I didn't know anything about flipping houses. Never did anything like that. When I was younger, I would help my dad, you know, make a couple of benches, but I would just hold the wood. It wasn't really like I knew anything, right? So now, and I'm, I'm 30. I'm like 31 at this time. 31, going to switch to house flipping. Didn't know anything about it. And I'm sitting there, I'm texting him, I say, hey, I don't know why, but the Lord just told me to ask you, do you are you guys looking for, a, like, do you have any work for me? And and his wife was like, actually, we do. We've been praying. We actually need someone to come help us. And I was like, okay. And so people lost their jobs during COVID and I actually went to work during COVID. That's how God does things. Like, that's how he works. That's how he moves. When you just say, okay, God, I don't understand it, but I'm just going to trust you. And I'm like, I'm going to work. Everybody's home and I'm going to work. We were flipping houses and uh, doing some construction work and different things. And But, you know, as time goes on, I've been doing it for three years and we're kind of like in a little bumpy spot right now. And uh, work is slow because a lot of people aren't buying houses. This is the time of our economy. We're not buying houses right now. It's not a buyer's market. It's way too expensive. The in interest right. rate is ridiculous, right? So we got a house on the market, and we're just sitting and waiting. And God's like, well, now I'm going to, you need to go out on your own and do some other jobs. And I'm like, 
I don't know what to do, God. And he's like, you just need to go out and do it. And I'm like, but I don't even know. And he's like, I just need you to be faithful in what you do. And I'm, like, I'm going to expand and I'm going to, I'm going to give you more. But we have to take what he's given us, right? He's given me three years of knowing a little bit of something. At least to hold a hand or something. I know how to do a little something. And he's like, go out now, what I've given you, and, and go and let me bring the increase. Yeah. And I could just sit home and give up and just say, well, my job's not working. And I can curse God and be like, God, you failed me. You didn't come through. You let me down. Or I can take what he's given me and allow him to be, bring the increase. Yeah. And so that's what these men did in verse 18. It said, but the one who received the five, well, actually, no, not verse 18, sorry, verse 16. It says, and then he who received the five talents, he went and he traded with the same and made them and made them other five talents. That's what the one did that five. He went out. He went out, right? He got up and he made a move. He went and he traded. That word went, it's an action verb, right? And trade it is an action verb. He got up, if we just sit on our bums and we're just waiting for God to just do everything and just, well, God, I'm just waiting on the Lord. And God's, and God's like, I'm just waiting on you to step out on faith. I'm just waiting for you to get up and do what I've called you to do. And we're just sitting and waiting and twiddling our thumbs. He's like, I can't, I can't make you do it. But this servant got up and he went and then it said he traded with the same. This isn't, this is what God has given this man. He got up and he went and he traded and the Lord blessed it and he made it increase. Yeah. Verse 16, verse 17, it says, And likewise, he who had received the two, he also gained another two. He did the same thing. He also got up and went and he took what the Lord, his master gave him, and the Lord brought an increase and gave him two more. Let's look at this guy, though. Now, the question today, and to you and to me, is what servant are you? Yeah. Verse 18 says, But he who had received one, he went and he digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. Wow, that makes sense. <laughs> Look, if I was in a kingdom, in that kingdom, and I'm watching, because you know we do. We watch everybody. We see everything that they do. We watch, we watch each other. Even at work, you're watching what the workers are doing. Someone's working really good, and they're getting a raise. Man, you're like, I'm about to work real good and get a raise. If you have common sense. If not, you're going to sit in the corner, and you're going to get fired. One or the other, right? It's that simple. This guy, after seeing the first one with half five, go and trade it, and gain five, he sat there and said, hmm. Then he watched the other one that had to get up and go do the same and came too. And then he said, I got a bright idea. I'm going to dig a hole in the ground and I'm going to put my money in it. And what is that going to do? That's how we are sometimes. We literally see God bless someone's life, right? We see God bless someone's life that is seeking God that is choosing in the trials of their life, in the troubles of their life, choosing to bless God and not curse God, to seek after God with all their heart, and we're seeing them get blessed. It might not be with things, but they have a blessing that is beyond, uh, what is it, you got peace that is beyond our understanding. They see someone in a hard time and they're like, how do you have joy? How do you have peace? How are you still going on? Your family's a mess, your kids are a mess, your husband, your marriage is falling apart, but you're still holding on to Jesus. And in our minds, we say, well, I'm going to do the opposite. That's smart. I'm going to do the opposite of what the first two guys did. And we expect God to bless us. That's right. Instead of doing what the first two sermons, servants did, he said, I'm going to dig a hole, put my money in it. That's real bright. My dad, when growing up, when we would do something not bright, he would say, you're not the brightest bulb in the pack. <laughs> that is not a bright move to a natural eye, to a business standpoint. Point, if I seen someone doing that, I would be like, something's not right up there, right? He takes the money. Now, the other two, it said in verse um, 16, he said he traded it with the same. And then in verse 18, it says he went and he dug it, dug in the earth and hid the Lord's money. 
How many times do we, as a servant of God, take what God has given us and we hide it in the earth? We, we put it in the earth. We invest it in the things of the world. Yep. We invest what God has given us into the things of the world and it produces nothing. It produces nothing. He's given us a big heart. The Lord is maybe is giving you a big heart. That's a thing that not everybody has. He's giving you a big heart, but yet you're pouring it into the wrong things. You're pouring it and you have a big heart and you're giving yourself to everybody and anyone and they're leaving you broken and beaten down. But the Lord is giving you this heart, but not to do it in that way, to do it in the way that God has given you to do it. He's giving you this loving heart Right, but yet you're you're trying to you're trying to basically sell yourself to the world. He's maybe you're a giver, and you're constantly giving and giving, but you're giving to have people look at you and give you praise. But if you give with that motive, it's going to leave you empty because no one's going to praise you. Yeah. At the end of it, no one's going to say thank you. No one's. In fact, they'll keep taking from you and taking from you, and and then they'll then they'll forsake you, even turn their back on you. How many times have we seen that happen? We give ourselves and give ourselves, and you're like, and those are the worst to you. I know growing up, my mom would say sometimes in ministry, we had a ministry with women and children, and she would say the ones that she would do the most for were the ones that were hurt for the worst. But she had to come to a place and realize that I'm giving unto the Lord, not to them, because if I give to the world, I'm going to come out empty. But if I give unto Jesus, he's going to bring the increase. Right. He's going to bring the increase. So God has given every single one of us ministry. He's given us gifts. He's given us things. But if we choose to sow it into the world, you're going to come back with no return. If I sow into the world, I'm going to come back empty. Because why? We are of a different currency. Did I say that right? We're of a different currency. The money that we obtain, the things that God has given us, is of a different currency. It's not of the world. They don't understand it. They, don't under, it, they can't use it. They can't use it. So we're under a different currency. So we need to sow it to the what? The kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven. We need to what? Invest in what God calls us to invest in. We need to invest in one another. We need to invest in the things of, that the Lord says is right. That the Lord calls us to invest in. You know, when I went out of uh, the country for the first time, I went to Ireland. I was young. I didn't know anything. Uh, we were talking about this the other day, me in Ireland, and uh, how I was just cutting up. I was having a good time. I was just young. I was living for the Lord, and I was on fire for God. And I was burning the candle at both ends of the state. I was doing every ministry thing I could. I mean, I tell you, I was trying to, like, take over Ireland for the Lord. And uh, I was young. I was, like, 20. I turned 20 in Ireland. And uh, literally, when I got there, I had American money, and I was so hungry, and I was like, I need something to eat. And I went to the store, and I was like, giving the girl American money, she was looking at me like, <laughs> I was like, what, like, what, like, what's the big deal? I forgot I had to change my money over to the currency of, of Ireland. I forgot I had to do that. So here I am with my money, and I'm starving, and I'm young, and I'm like trying to buy something, and the girl's like, I, we don't take that here. And I was like, why, this is money. This is a twenty dollar bill. What's wrong with you? She's like, and then the lady that picked us up from the airport, she laughed at me, and she could tell it was my first time traveling, and I didn't know much. <laughs> she was like, "I'll take care of it." And she pulled out her uh, money, the euros and different things, and I was like, "Oh, it's a different currency." Yeah. I couldn't yeah. spend the money that I had unless what? Unless I exchanged it for the currency that they had. And so many times we take the currency that God has given us, the gifts that God has given us, and we try to spin it in the world. And when we spin it in the world, they look at us like, <laughs> they don't work. In fact, they take it and they stump on it. Yeah. Right. And we come out, we're trying to figure out, why did I get hurt again? Why did I get hurt after I went into that relationship? Because you were going in there with a different currency, and that brother wasn't even about that. He didn't even have the same kind of money as you in his pocket. And we over here trying to exchange, and we're trying to make something happen, and he's not even going in the direction that, that the Lord is calling you to go in. Yes. Or whether it's a woman. You walking around, if you're a man of God, and you're seeking the Lord, and next thing you know, the, uh, someone comes in your life, you are about the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. You have a different currency in your pocket, and she's trying to lure you with something else, and it doesn't match. Yeah. Yeah. 
right. one or the other is going to have to exchange. Either I'm going to have to exchange my money, or they're going to have to exchange their money oh to become gosh, one. And so what happens is a lot of times we fight and we're fighting and we're trying to make this thing work. And the whole time the Lord's like, I never called you to that. I never called you to that. And so what this man does, he sees what they do and he says, I'm going to hide it into the earth. I'm going to dig. That is so, to dig a hole and to put your money in, that takes some effort. It takes some effort. Instead, he could have just did what the other guys did, took their money, traded it, and, you know, let the money do what the money does. Money will increase if you put it in the right, right uh, spot, you put it in the right project or the right thing. It will, it will multiply. But he said, I'm going to go about it the hard way. He starts digging and he's toiling. And so many times we're digging and we're digging. We're like, I'm going to make something happen. We're digging, we're digging, and we're striving. And the Lord's like, I never told you to do that. I never called you to that. And then we hide it. We hide it. See, when we invest in the things of God, we try to take light and we try to mix it with darkness. Eventually, darkness will take over because there's not an increase. And then it becomes hidden. The world wants to hide what God has given you that life might not come forth from it. The world wants to hide what the Lord is doing or what God has given you so that what? That the Lord cannot get glory in your life. Look at verse 19. It says, after a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh. And he reckoned with them. Sorry, that was verse 19. Yeah, verse 19. Verse 20. And so he who had received the five talents and brought another five talents said, Lord, you delivered unto me five talents. And behold, I have gained beside them five, five talents more. What did he say? He said, Lord, you delivered unto me. Keep that in mind. I want you to remember that. He said, Lord, you delivered unto me five talents. Verse 21. And the Lord said unto him, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter therefore into the joy of the Lord, of your Lord. Verse 22. And he also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered unto me Two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. Verse 23. And the Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter there unto the joy of your Lord. Both of the servants. The ones that had the five, the one that had the two. When the Lord came back, guys... God is coming back. Yes. He's coming back. Amen. He's coming back. He can come back right now. He can come back. I don't know. We don't know when he's coming, but the signs are there. Right. He's coming back. He's coming back. And not only he's coming back, he's going to take account to everything that he's bestowed you, everything that he's given you, and he's going to, he's going to have you take an account for what you did with it. This precious life that you have been given, he is going to want to take account of what you have done with it. This precious gift, Jesus Christ, that he's given us, he's going to want to know and see, what did you do with Jesus? That's right. What did you do with my son? You are a part of the kingdom of heaven. What did, what did you do with it? Because I've given you much. What did you do with it? Right. And he's going to want to take account. And I love what these servants said. They said, Lord... What you have given me, they've doubled it. And I said, and they, they're giving it back to him. And he says, he says what? Enter into the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord will be your strength. The joy of the Lord will be your strength. That is a gift. That is, that is a wonderful gift. The joy of the Lord is the strength of our hearts. And he tells them, enter into that, enter into that dress, that joy. Enter into that rest. Verse 18. Here we go. We have the bright one. Sorry, verse, 
Let's look at verse 23. No, sorry, excuse me. Verse 24. When then which he received the one time came and said, Lord, I know you and that you are an hard man. Reaping where you do not sow and gathering where you do not plant. Verse 25, and, and, he was, and he was afraid. And he went and hid, he said, and I went and hid your talent in the earth. And there you have that which is yours. He didn't even go and dig it up for the Lord when he came back. He just said, it's in the ground over there. <laughs> He's like, what you gave me is in the ground. And not only that. What does he say? He said, Lord, I know. What did the other servants say? Look at verse 22. Verse 22, the other servant said this, the one that received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered unto me two talents. And then verse 24, what did this man say? He said, Lord, I know. We don't know anything. We don't know anything. So many times we come before God so bold. Lord, I know this and that and that and that. And we run our mouths and the Lord's like, you don't know anything. Because we don't, we don't have a clue what God is doing on the other side. See, we can only know from what we see with our natural eyes. And we can, we can, literally he was saying, you are a harsh man. You gave me only one, God. You gave everybody else more than me. You only gave me one. You're harsh. So I just put it in the ground. And in fact, I left it there. Go get it. But did he really know the character of God? So many times the enemy would come to us and whisper in our ears and tell us the character of God and say, I know God has forgotten you. I know he doesn't care about you. I know he doesn't love you. I know you, I know you struggle with this and this and that, and God doesn't forgive you. And we'll listen to it like, like Eve did in the garden. She was in the garden and the serpent said to her, he said, oh, did the Lord say, you know, that you cannot eat of this tree? And she said, yes, the Lord said we can't eat of it. And not only can we not eat of it, we can't even touch it. That's a whole other thing. She added to what God said. God didn't even say don't touch it. He said don't eat it. But she was like, we can't even, we can't even touch it. And so, but then he says, that's not true. He said, God knows in the day that you surely eat of this, your eyes will be open and you will be as God. So he paints a picture that, first of all, what? God's a liar. He paints a picture that says, God is a liar. That's not true what God said. It's not even true. And in fact, this is what's going to happen. And he said, and you surely won't die. How many times does the world lie to us? It says, if you do this, man, this is going to satisfy you. If you do this, this is going to give you the peace that you want. If you do this, you will have the best life ever. And so we take the lie and we believe it as the character of God. So what did Eve do? She believed the lie that the enemy sold to her and she said, this is truth. And when she said it was truth, then she said, this is the character of God. God is a liar. He doesn't want me to have good things and he don't care about me. So I'm going to eat this fruit and I'm going to get what I need to get. And this servant had the same mindset. You gave me this one talent. I'll put it in the ground because you're a harsh master. That servant did not even know the character of God. Didn't have a clue of who God was or this man who was a type of Christ in this story. How many times do I, how many times do you, what God has given us, and maybe it's falling apart. Maybe it's falling apart. I could have taken when my, my business was a mess and we're like, Mark's like, we don't have any work and what are you going to do? And I'm like, I don't know. I ain't got no money and what am I going to do? You know, I could have started cursing the Lord right then and there. And believe me, the enemy tempted me to do so. It's like, God, how can you, I, I serve you, God. I, I, man, I'm on that piano plucking away every Sunday and Wednesday. How are you going to let my business slow down? How are you going to take my money from me? And I could get angry at the Lord. Yes. And, and, or we could be, Lord, you gave me this marriage, but we can't stand each other and we're fighting and we're arguing like cats and dogs all the time. Oh, what is this? God's not the one that brought the destruction. This world's a falling place and it's never going to be perfect. And we're never going to be perfect until we stand before glory. And we were in the youth group the other day and um, we were asking a question. Uh, basically, 
Why do bad things happen, basically, to good people? Why did the Lord allow bad things to happen? You asked that question, right? You remember that? We were asking the question, why does he allow these things to happen? And it's, it's simple. God is, he's all omnipotent. He's all powerful. He's able to do everything, but he's given us a free will. We live in a world where there's a free will. And people do wicked and evil things. And he's not the one that's causing it, right? We are. We're the ones that are causing it. He didn't cause this man not to get an increase. The man dug the hole. He strived and dug the hole and threw the money in it and threw the dirt on it. And was like, well, Lord, that's your fault. You are a harsh man. Well, if you would have went about it the way God wanted it to be done, it would have been a different result. And in our life, so many times things fall apart, my job or whatever. But if I go about it with a kingdom mindset and I go about it with knowing and trusting and believing God is able to do the impossible, believing God to show up and, and where there's no way to make a way, then he's going to do it. But if I take that circumstance and I just decide to say, I'm going to take all this, dig a hole, cover it up, and just be angry at the Lord and say, Lord, you're a harsh man. You reap where you have not sown. And you gather. And if I believe the lies of the enemy, then my mindset of who God is and the character of God will be warped. And that's where the enemy wants us. If he can get you to believe a lie yes. and be sold on a lie, then what? He's got you. <clears throat> if you can believe the character of God is not true and believe those things about God that are wrong, it won't cause us to run to our loving Father. He wants to bring the deception. He wants to bring the deception in our lives. He wants to change the identity of God in our eyes because if God, the identity of God and who he is and what he's able to do, we won't go to God to get him to do the great and mighty things. We won't believe him in our lives. So this man, he hid it, and the Lord said, he answered in verse 26, the Lord answered and said unto him, he said, you wicked and slothful servant. You knew that I reap where I sowed not, and I gathered where I have not planted. And then in verse 27, he said, at least you could have done is taken it to the bank, and I would have got a little bit of interest off of it. If you know anything about money, he's like, at least you could have made me something. Gave me a little bit of money off of it. I could have made some type of profit. But he called him what? A wicked and slothful servant. Let me ask you this. If this man really felt the way he did about that man and a part of his kingdom, why did he stay? So many times we had a ministry in New Jersey. We had about like 30 women or so on the property and stuff. And uh, you're trying to help these women and it's a program to help them get off drugs, all kinds of things. All kinds of different abuse. And we would have some women there, and they'll be in the midst of the people, and uh, they would just stir up problems. They would just, and we'd be like, there, there's no gate here. You can leave. There's, there, there's a door. You can go. You can come in and leave as you please. But yet they stay. They stay, and they just grumble, and they, and they, they sow seeds of discord. They bring division. How many times does that happen in church? We might not like something that's going on, and we, and it's like the door's there. No one's holding you, right? But we'll stay in the midst and we'll just so see. Did you hear what someone so said? Did you see what? Did you? Can you believe the pastor? Can you believe? Why are you sitting in the chair then? Right. Why did he decide to stay a part of the kingdom? He stayed in the kingdom because he still was getting some benefits, you know. Because something in our heart still tells us, you know what? This is where I'm supposed to be. A lot of times it's either. We know in our hearts that this is where I'm supposed to be and I need to surrender and let God do what he wants to do. Or a lot of the times we just want to be used by the devil to stir up things in the house of God. Hello. Yeah. I'm going to just be honest, right? Yeah. It's only two ways. This man could, if he felt that way about his master, why didn't you just give the money back and walk out the door? Yeah. And so many times we could do that at our job. We're grumbling and grumbling, man. But doesn't you hear about the boss? And we're taught every day we got something to say about the. Then why are you there? Because either you're supposed to be there and you're supposed to allow the Lord to break you so he can get the glory out of it, so you can encourage someone, so you can help someone, so you can be Jesus to someone, yeah. or you're just bringing havoc. I don't know. Only you know. You know, even as I'm speaking right now, <laughs> what it is that the Lord's telling you in your heart. But he chose to stay. 
And then the Lord said to him, said, you're a wicked and slothful servant, lazy, shiftless. My dad would sometimes say that to us growing up. They'd be like, you're lazy and shiftless. Get up, girl. Get to work. He was just talking about that. He was just always like, get to work. And I would just be like, oh, I don't want to do anything. Uh, but he called him lazy. He was so lazy, he left the coin in the ground. He didn't even go and dig it up. Like, come on. He just said, and in fact, it's still over there. Go get it. And then he said this in verse uh, where he said he was afraid. Verse 25, he said, and I was afraid. If he really did fear, he wouldn't have done what he did. If he really did fear the Lord, it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. He was lacking much wisdom in this, in this situation. If he really feared God, he wouldn't have did what he did. Because he knows that God could have stopped one finger. And he said, he's like, if you didn't have any understanding. If you really feared me, you wouldn't have did what you did. And so many times, <clears throat> the enemy would try to come. And the fact is, is we lack fear of God. Because if we really feared the Lord in a holy, righteous, reverent way, we wouldn't live the way we live. Satan's always like, we need the fear of God. We need the fear of God in our lives. I need the fear of God in my life. I need the fear of God in my life. Not in a way that I can't come to him, but the fear of God to know that he's a holy God and a righteous God and a loving God and he's mighty and powerful. I need the fear of God in my life. It's the beginning of wisdom. To give us wisdom of how we're supposed to live our life. Because when we lack the fear of God and we lack that wisdom, man, we're so, we're just not thinking right. We're not the brightest bulbs in the pot. We find ourselves in positions where we shouldn't be. We find ourselves doing things we shouldn't be doing. We find ourselves watching things we shouldn't be watching. We're finding ourselves in conversations we shouldn't be. We find ourselves living the way we are where we shouldn't be because the wisdom of God, we silenced it. He said he had a fear of God. He said he had a fear of God, but yet he did not. He said he knew the Lord, but he did not know him. He had an outward appearance appearance of Christ, but, le but yet he lacked the power there was. That's right. He had an understanding or a form of godliness, but no power. I can come here every Sunday, every Wednesday, whatever, every prayer meeting, every, and I can check off every box and do everything I'm supposed to do outwardly, but yet there's no power and living a life of a Christian that is powerless and being thrown to and from. And the Lord today is speaking to us. What servant are you? What servant are you? And it might not, you might not look like the one with hiding the talent in every area of your life. You might look like the, the one with the 10 on some areas. And you might look like the one with the five, but there's some spots in every one. If we're honest with ourselves this morning, there's spots in every single one of our lives where God is wanting to bring an increase and we dug a hole and we threw it and we said, Lord, I don't want to do it. If we were to be honest, we can all say that, Lord, I am not the servant that you want me to be. There's more. There's more for me to do, Lord. And he's calling us and he's given us not only the, he's given us the power and the ability to do it. He provides the goods to do so. He provides the goods to do so. Verse 28, it says, Therefore, it says, Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto, the, unto him which has ten talents. 29. And it says, And unto every one who has shall be given, and he shall have and he shall have abundance. But for him who has not shall be taken away even which he has. What is that saying? He said, take the one from the one guy, give it to the guy that had the ten. But then he said this, he said, unto everyone who has been given, God is giving you something. And he's giving you, and you're by faith, you're believing it and allowing the Holy Spirit to bring the increase. See, when we need God to increase uh, with our currency, we don't go to the world, we go to the Lord. He's the one. It's kingdom money, it's kingdom mindset, kingdom living, kingdom, kingdom walking, kingdom thinking. And, and we take it and we say, Lord, you bring the increase. 
And he does it because he has the ability. He's got all the currency. He's got everything we need. And so we give it to him and we say, Lord, take this. And he brings an increase. But he said, for those that has been given, it will be given more. But then it says this. It says, but for him who has not shall be taken away even which he has. What is it saying? Even if I don't have the currency of the kingdom of God, the things that I've built up in this earth, the things that I've built my life on other than Christ Jesus, it's going to fade away. Worship team, come on. It's going to fade away. Everything that we build our lives on outside of Christ, it will fade. The boyfriend that you're looking to, to give you freedom and victory or whatever, or joy, peace and all that, it's going to fade. The job and the security that you're looking to, the finances, guess what? It's going to burn up. This world is not our home. You are not of this world. You, we are to be of a different kingdom. The kingdom of heaven. Not the kingdom of this earth, but the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And so he said it's going to be taken away. So if I build my life on anything outside of what Christ has given me, it's going to perish. Right. Said the moth and the fire and all of it is going to just eat it up. It's going to eat it up. It's going to perish. Let's stand. It's going to perish. But if we build in Jesus Christ, if we take what the Lord has given us, if we take what God has given you, if you take what God has given you, he will bring an increase if you give it back to him. If you give it back to him, you say, Lord, I don't have anything, but I give it all to you. Everything that I have, you have given me, and I return it back to you, Jesus. I return it back to you, Jesus. The Lord will increase it. But if we decide to say, well, Lord, it didn't go the way I wanted it to go. Lord, my life isn't the way I want it to be. And I'm angry at you and I'm, and I'm bitter towards you. I'm just going to take what you've given me and hide it in a hole. That's the question. The question that I gave you guys in the beginning was, what servant are you? What servant? What, what kind of servant are we today? I don't know about you, but I know my own life, there's many areas in my life that God's like, Naya, I want you to give me this area. Will you, will you come and surrender to me in this area? Would you give it to me and allow me to shine my light on it and to change it? Yes. And then there's things in my life where I'm like giving the Lord all I got and I'm like, Lord, take it, bless it, bless it. And he's increasing it. But sometimes it could get tiring. We could get tired and well-doing. Maybe that's you this morning. Maybe you're tired of just well-doing because you're not seeing the increase right, right away. You know, I, I do a little investing. When I'm investing in a house, sometimes I don't see that money back right away. And I just have to believe that it's doing what it's doing. But sometimes with God, we can't see what God is doing in our lives. And so we either trust them by faith and believe or we just believe what we see with our eyes everybody close your eyes maybe that's you this morning maybe the question to you is what kind of servant are you maybe there's some things in your life that that maybe isn't really portraying or maybe showing that you are part of the kingdom of heaven maybe there's some things in your life that you that the Lord has blessed you with and you've used it in the world and has left you empty and broken. But God's saying, I want you to come and use your gifts that I've given you for my kingdom, for the glory of God. And if that's you <clears throat> this morning, I just want to invite you to come. Come and just do an exchange with Jesus. Come in and do an exchange with Jesus Christ this morning. Meet with him and say, Lord, I need to exchange with you, Lord. I need you to bring an increase in my life, Lord. So as we begin to sing this song, if that's you, these altars are open. If you need prayer, these altars are open. If you need to believe God to move in your life, if you just need a touch from Jesus, I just want you to know you can be satisfied with him this morning. Come and exchange with him. Hallelujah.